What's going on AFL Fantasy Freak fam? Welcome back to the channel. For those that are new around here, I'm Jacob, aka the AFL Fantasy Freak. If you like AFL Fantasy content, make sure to smash the subscribe button. In this video guys, I'm going to be covering round 2 trades and everything that you need to consider when performing your moves this week. First of all, guys, I just want to start by saying that the lighting isn't that good. Uh, it's a fucking shit-ass day in Perth today, so I apologise for that. As for round two, well, we did see a little bit of carnage. We had popular trade targets like Shoal, Stevenson, Caldwell. They all failed. Um, popular trading targets that I recommended last week. My top two guys were Hind and Markov, and they managed to score well, carried on their merry ways, and they looked to generate a stack of cash. So if you're looking to potentially chase a mid-price guy, I think that Hind and Markov still have enough value in them, and they could be worth chasing this week. But this week's probably the last week in which you can afford to spend up to get these guys. As for the premise with my round two trades and what I recommend you guys do, very similar to round one. So I'll be looking to fix up rookies and make sure my cash generation is strong. I keep harping on this point, but at the start of the year, it's important to generate cash so you can afford upgrades quicker and earlier in the year. Building your team value is achieved by trading in these rookies that make large amounts of money and potentially jumping on the right mid prices that you can ride up to the top as well. As for the rookies that you should be looking to target, obvious ones, if you don't have Errol Goulden or James Jordan, those two are absolute must-haves along with Matt Flynn and Chad Warner. If you don't have one of those four guys, it's an absolute priority that you get that sorted this week with your trades. These guys are going to make way too much money to not have, and you'll get left too far behind if you don't own these guys. My next five guys that I recommend targeting are Braden Campbell. He's my number one rookie option this week. Whilst you will be paying up, he has great role and the best job security available. So, he looks like a guy that Sydney will potentially play every game this year. He has a great role at halfback and he even took a couple of the kick-ins last week. So great signs for him. His scoring was fantastic last week. And my only query with him was the fact that I didn't think he had a great ceiling. But the fact that he scored 96 last week has squashed that for me. And therefore, I think he's a fantastic option. But at the price you'd have to be getting on this week. He's probably too much to pay next week at around roughly 350K. The next best option for me is Charlie Lazaro. I think that even with Cunnington back in the side, he should hold his spot. I think his scoring ability is decent. And if he's to hold his spot this week with Cunnington to come back and potentially Will Phillips to enter the side, I think that his job security will be good in the future going forward, and therefore he should be able to generate you a fair chunk of coin. My third option is Miles Bergman. Miles, I was a little bit hesitant to start with just because of the job security thing with Hamish Hartlett to come back. Fortunately, Riley Bonner out injured has sort of opened up that hole in the side now, and it looks like there's a spot for both of them. But it is Port Adelaide and they could potentially bring other guys in. There are other guys to come out and they could rejig their side. And he's probably still that guy that goes out if they were to make some major changes. So 
I'd be a little bit worried about his job security, but his role was good and his scoring's there. So if he holds his spot, he could be one to bring in. My fourth rookie option, we have Sam Berry. Uh, great role inside, but in round two, we saw his CBAs decrease and his time on ground decrease. And with Matt Crouch lurking to come back at some point in the near future, he's probably the one that goes out of the side. So at the inflated price tag of 262K, I think there's better options as a downgrade target. My final rookie option is Tyler Brockman. Uh, he has a great break even, but they do play on the Monday, which is the last game of the round, and therefore you're not going to know what the teams look like and whether he's actually going to play. You would assume he holds his spot as he's been quite good as a pressure small forward, but Chad Wingard looks to come back into the side. And whilst I think they'll play both of them, it is still something to consider. And therefore, that's why I have him so far down my list as you don't want to bring in a guy and then essentially, if he doesn't play, you've just wasted a trade. So those will be the rookies that I suggest targeting. A couple others that potentially get games this week could be Will Phillips and Archie Perkins. Archie Perkins in particular, I'm quite interested in as Essendon's midfield's quite depleted with the injuries of Coldwell and Shield, And I think they could use this opportunity to blood him, get him into the side and get him into the midfield rotations. So he's one to keep an eye out for and one that could have good job security because of the injuries Essendon have. As for mid-price options, I mentioned Markov and Hind earlier. I think with mid-price options, it's better to steer clear at this point of the year, just because with the mid-price options, they come with a lot lower ownership. There's a lot more risk involved. And I don't think that in the early parts of the season, it's worth taking the risks that that comes with. When it comes to mid-price options, I prefer to use the first few rounds to identify a lot of targets that I'm interested in. And then give them a few weeks just to make sure that I'm confident and consolidate that role and make sure that the factors that I think can lead to improvement are true. I will have an article up on my website tomorrow. Link will be in the description for that. And this will just highlight my watch list players, everyone that I'm looking at that's in that mid price bracket. There's a lot of you guys out there that may have forced trades. So whether that be Coldwell, Draper, uh, potentially a Harms from last week, if you had both Rao and Dangerfield. With these guys, I'd be looking to do a downgrade upgrade. So premium guys that I suggest that you target this week include Josh Dunkley. He's probably my number one priority as I think that he will be the number one forward this year. And if not, he'll be very close. At his current price, there's still upside as he could potentially average 110 this year. He's shown in the past that when playing through the middle, he can put up huge numbers and has averaged over 115 over an extended period while in this role. So for me, he's the one that I would be going to as a forward or a midfield upgrade. If you already have Dunkley, some others that I would consider are Rory Laird, Jack Crisp. I think Jack Crisp is a great option, a great unique option. His centre bounce usage has gone up a lot this year. He's averaging 43%, which is up 39% on last year. He looks to continue through the middle with Elliot out. Degoe should spend time forward and with the development of Quaynor and Noble, I think that they'll continue to use him through the middle this year. He's priced at 98, but I think there's still upside there, and he's probably the defender that I'd be looking to target. As for midfield options, there's not really too many premiums at this point in time that I would suggest upgrading to. I think that Tom Mitchell could potentially get tagged by O'Connor this week, which is a slight concern, seen as O'Connor did hold Neil to 50-odd last week. McRae, 
Uh, obviously a great option. Looks to be the number one or number two mid this year, along with Merritt. And I think that whilst he's very expensive, he could continue to rise as he could average 120 to 125 this year. If you can afford to get him now, I don't think it's the worst play. The reason why I suggest holding off potentially on a big midfield upgrade is there's a lot of good options at the moment that are dropping cash. So you guys like your Neil, Taylor Adams, Andrew Gaff, these guys in another one or two weeks may be perfect to pick up as premiums that have dropped a lot of value. Personally, I'll be looking to potentially bring Taylor Adams in one or two weeks and therefore I'm holding off on a midfield upgrade because he's the guy that I want. I want to make sure that I'm able to get him in that one to two week time frame. I'll flash the high break evens up on the screen so you guys can take a look. But essentially, these guys are just as important to monitor as the guys with low break evens, as this is where you want to be looking to plan your upgrade targets. So for me, a big no-no in AFL Fantasy is paying top dollar for your premium players, as they can only go down from that price. So you want to treat it like stocks and you want to sell high and get in low. So you want to monitor these break-evens and when a premium player looks like they've bottomed out in price, meaning they're not going to go any lower, that's your chance to then get on and hope that they can turn their form around and potentially rise back up in value. Monitoring the high break-evens also is vital in planning your trades. So you want to have a look here, identify the guys that you're interested in. Ask yourself how many weeks realistically is it going to take for them to bottom out. That will give you an idea of how many weeks you have to get your team in a position where you can then get that player. So if you like a guy and it looks like he's going to be at his lowest point in two to three weeks, that gives you time to make sure you can free up some cash in order to achieve that guy in that time frame. As for your premiums, so if you have guys like Gaff or Neil, for example, that are dropping a lot of value, my advice for you is to hold on to these guys as whilst it's frustrating, they're losing a lot of value, their scores are pretty poor, they will turn around and they will bounce back. So Andrew Gaff is a guy that's averaged 110 over the past three years. You know what you're going to get from him and you know where he's going to be at the end of the season. So there's no point trading him now when he's lost 100k from his starting price. All you're doing is consolidating that cash loss and also locking in the bad scores. So effectively, you're trading Gaff out for a 60 average, which is not the way you want to go about things. I suggest you chase value elsewhere, build your team value elsewhere, and eventually he'll turn his form around and his price will come back up to where it was originally. Premium options such as Riley O'Brien, I could consider making a move on this week as... I still am of the opinion that I think Rux will struggle to score over the next few rounds and therefore I can't see him getting back to a respectable score level. If you are to make a move like this, I think you potentially just have to go straight to Grundy. You could go to Wits as well, but it doesn't give you that much coin and effectively you'll still need to do an upgrade trade on Wits later in the future. So you may as well save that trade now and go straight to the set and forget option. As for what I'm looking to do with my side, I'll flash that up on the screen. I traded Coldwell in last week, so he obviously has to go. And then I'll be using my second trade to just sideways a rookie to someone that I think will generate me more coin over the next few weeks. Nothing fancy with these trades. As I've stated in previous videos and articles, that 
I like to keep things simple at the start of the year. I like to focus on building team value and I don't like to take too many risks. I usually start with a couple unique options at the start of the year, but it's not usually until round five or six where I, I really start looking at taking some risks with some unique guys. So in summary, what I recommend you guys use your trades for is to fix up bench rookies that aren't playing or don't look to make much money. Fix up your injuries and then if you do have one or two trades left over where you're in a luxury position, I'd be looking to trade out guys like Paddy Dow, Xavier O'Neill, Tom Green, potentially a Jordan Clark, Dom Tyson who may get dropped this week. These are all candidates for the chopping block. The number one principle that you guys want to focus on is make sure you're targeting value, building value, and if you're chasing a premium upgrade, you want to ask yourself, is this guy a must-have now? Is he going to rise in value? Is he going to increase? If the answer to that is yes, you probably want to get on him now as he'll only be more expensive in the future. If it's a guy that's relatively fully priced, you may decide that he's only going to drop from there and therefore you can afford to pass up on a guy as you can maybe pick him up for 50000 less at a later point in the season. Thanks for tuning in, guys. If you've enjoyed this episode of Trade Talk, make sure to leave a thumbs up. If you've got any queries or questions about your side and the trades you're looking to do this week, Drop them below in the comments. Smash the subscribe button for more AFL fantasy content. And until next time, keep climbing up the ranks. Look, I'm about my pledge, bitch. I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit. There's like fall leaves in the backfield. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to say.